Uh, hello, again. Um, I thought I would do a video on one of my pet peeves, which has been a pet peeve for a bit now, but anyway. My pet peeve is two st um, having a supercharger on two-stroke engines. In this case, nitro two-stroke engines. Now, you see a lot of videos with, I think the name is RB Innovation Superchargers on, or you get 30% more power, this, that and the other. Basically, they're speaking out the arse. A two-stroke, the principle of a two-stroke means it cannot be supercharged, it cannot have extra boost, as they would call it, in the engine itself, because it's going to be detrimental to the engine, and it's not going to burn fuel properly. And I am going to explain in this video why it's not going to, it's not going to do it visually. As I get sick of commenting on these videos and getting some person who thinks they know better, and when they don't know now to half the time, how these engines, base, how basically I'm wrong on that, but I'm going to now explain visually using this demonstration de demonstrator engine here, which it blew up. Not with a supercharger, but just because it was worn. Why a supercharger won't work on a two-stroke. So, as we can see, we've got the main parts of the engines I need to explain. Take the head off. Now, first part of the engine I'm going to have to explain is the crankshaft itself, because in these engines, the crankshaft actually plays a major role in the induction. Now, I would call this engine a disc valve induction engine, a disc valve induction two-stroke, which is basically the same as my little A100 motorbike I've got in the garage. Now, basically what this means is, instead of just having the piston controlling when the air fuel mixture comes in, you also have, if we just do that down, we have the crank shaft itself controlling when the fuel air mixture comes in. Now, basically this hole here is set to when the piston is going up in the, the actual bore, which then creates a vacuum to suck the fuel through here and into the crank case itself, which I'll show in a sec when I get down here. Now, I was studying this engine last night because I just found it last night, me bits and bobs, and basically, if we turn it to the point where it's open, which is there, when it's just opening, the crankshaft itself is at, oh, the crank itself is at, remember, 40 degrees off top dead centre, or before top dead centre. By this time, all these ports will be closed, and the piston will be working its way up. Oh, I've got the piston the wrong way around. Oh, well, I'll deal with that later. Basically, the piston is going back up the piston, the, the cylinder, so that means it's creating a vacuum underneath it. So that means that vacuum helps suck the fuel air mixture into the crankcase here. And basically, when the piston starts going down, which is around about 20 degrees after top dead centre, which, if I can turn this, is around about there. Still open a tad, which is about. It's about there, but basically by that time the piston is starting to go back down. Now, in effect, this has the the there well, it pressurizes the fuel air mixture inside the crankcase itself. Now, basically, this little two-stroke here is supercharging itself, but not to the degree it's going to be detrimental to the performance. Now, if you had a RB supercharger on there. It would, as soon as that port opens, it would pressurise this, um, the crankcase, way above the pressure it should be. And then it would shut off, and you have to remember the supercharger is still going at the time, even when it shut off, so you've got actually a, ba a back backing of pressure. Now, on a full-size car, you would have a wastegate, not wastegate, a dump valve, to dump that extra pressure out, but these ones don't as you would think. Uh, so I was just taking the piston out. So yeah, you, so this engine basically does up the pressure of the fuel air mixture anyway without the aid of a supercharger, but it's not enough to be detrimental. Now, why, user saying, would 
forcing fuel air mixture in at a pressure, like in a four stroke, be detrimental to a two stroke. Now, in a four stroke, yep, more pressure, more fuel, means a bigger bang. More fuel air into the combustion engine, uh, in the combustion chamber means a bigger bang, yes, but in a two stroke, same principle, the more fuel air mixture you get in, a bigger bang, but the way you're getting that fuel air mixture into the, into the cylinder is totally different. Now, if we can pop me demonstrator on here. As we can see, this is the, the inside, this is the cylinder and the piston. We have ports around the outside. Now, when the piston starts to travel down, it opens up the exhaust port. This allows the exhaust gases to go out of the cylinder and into the exhaust. This also releases a pressure wave down the exhaust. We shall get to that. We shall get back to that later. But as we continue down, we see that the induction ports open, which are these three around the outside. I won't go that far down, but yeah, these three on the outside open. This means there is a clear path. Oops, oh, well, we don't need the piston no more. This means there's a clear path from the exhaust port here straight through into the induction port. So this means fuel air mixture is going to go straight from the induction port over the cylinder over the piston I should say through the exhaust. Now like I said about that pressure wave these exhausts here which are, known, which are called expansion chambers basically are designed to let the pressure expand and then basically it bounces another pressure wave up the exhaust and back up the manifold to then meet the escaped fuel air mixture that which will be just partly out the going into the exhaust and basically bounce it and push it back in and hopefully by that time these induction ports are shut because the exhaust port opens before and then shuts after the induction ports so basically that's keeping the fuel air mixture inside the cylinder. Now, one flaw with two strokes is they have to be designed. The the expansion chambers have to be designed for a certain RPM because the 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 RPM is going to be different. And all that, so you will always have fuel, unburned fuel, going to into the exhaust system of a two stroke. But a two stroke will work better at a certain RPM. If you had a supercharger on, it blows all that out of proportion because. The induction pressure is a lot more than it should be, so that means the pressure wave is going to be different and also the pressure wave is not going to be able to push against the added pressure and actually push the, <coughs> the fuel air mixture back into the cylinder itself. Now this has the effect of pushing a lot of unburned fuel in there through the exhaust and also makes your engine run leaner. Now, this is because the, the fuel and air that should be in here to burn is not in there, so we've got less fuel, so that's that's going to make the engine run leaner. There's less air, but there's normally more air to fuel in the when you supercharge one of these. You also have the other effect of, in the fuel, is the oil, the lubrication, it's normally caster. So you've got less lubrication as well, so that means with running lean, you're also running less lubrication which then means it's leading to seized engines and all that now the reason why you see these videos on YouTube and you see the you will see an effect when the supercharger kicks in like goes revs really high it's very punchy and stuff like that but that's basically an effect of an engine from going from running rich to all of a sudden running lean to the point where it's nearly seasoned <coughs> which is not good and that's what these superchargers do now I know I'll still get people commenting back saying oh you're wrong you're this that and the other but I've, I've like I've said I've had 12 years experience in nitro engines two strokes I have had a two stroke motorbike since I was 17 and what stripped and worked on with me dad and he used to tune them for a living so I've got most of my knowledge of him and on top of that I am also an automotive student at university learning how engines work even though to be honest I know it already but I, I do know what I'm talking about and 
take it from me, superchargers for 100 and something pounds you're going to spend on it, they're not worth it, they're just going to ruin your engine, you're going to have to buy a bigger engine. My advice to you is, get an exhaust that is tuned to your engine, and also, you normally, they normally come either they're tuned to mid-range, low range or high range, now, that's saying where the RPM, which RPM it's tuned to now. Like I say, I normally go for mid range, mid to high range, just because I like I like the poke further up the engine. So, and having a performance expansion chamber on will be a lot more beneficial than putting one of these superchargers on, and this won't wreck your engine. And also keep your fuel, the air filter clean, because that's always a problem. You know, we get people who don't clean them as often as they should. But yeah. After all that, that's basically the end of the video and the end of my rant about how and why two strokes do not take well to being supercharged. And that's the end of that. And yeah, that's all I've got to go on about. But two strokes, simple, but they have to be tuned right and they have to work under their principles. You cannot just go sticking superchargers on them and throwing that principle out the window which you're doing so anyway after that rant i feel a lot better and i'm going to sign off because i don't have a clue what else to talk about because i've said it all and hopefully i'll get more videos up so yeah have a nice day and um i'll see you soon